Winter Cut Day 73. Today is freaking chest day. I'm very excited. I honestly think this is probably one of the most beautiful days in recorded history of planet Earth, okay? There's a nice wind, okay? The sun's out shining, okay? The sky is blue, okay? All right? I'm freaking excited. So anyway, though, we're going to take the creatine today. Boys, don't forget code MSharky996, link in bio. Um, and we are going to ingest some carbohydrates before the workout. Because here's the thing, guys. It's important to be in a caloric deficit on the cut. But you should not forego carbohydrates before your workout. Okay? I think you should still have as many as you can fit in to your kind of daily caloric limit, right? Like if you're going to have a thousand calorie dinner later, right? And your limit's 1500 for the day, have like a good amount of carbs. I'm, I'm talking like 300 to 500 calories worth of carbs before your workout. Um, some people might approach it differently. I approach it that way. You do not have to, but I believe strongly that carbs help the effectiveness of your workouts and they fill your muscles with glycogen and everything and they in improve your endurance and your force output and all these things. So it's definitely worth it. Plus, I'm going to be honest, guys, the pump is totally worth it. So if you were skeptical about having a lot of carbs before your workout, the pump is worth it. Now, guys, another thing, too, you can't be going, you, you can't be having, like, I want to use a good example, a example of, like, slower digesting carbs. You can't be having, like, pasta, bro. You know what I mean? Or, like, tortilla chips. You got to have things like honey. You got to have things like, um, you know, just things that are, th things that are sweeter tend to be a little faster digesting. I don't know if that's just a bro science myth, but the things that I've heard listed off as like, oh, have this before your workout. It's like liquid carbs usually. So I tend to go with liquid carbs, but sometimes I'll go with like a, a, some kind of dessert. If that makes sense, some kind of like sweet item. And that still works pretty well. So here, let me, let me show you guys this. There you go, no spill. So boys, I am displeased to report that I am very, very dehydrated today. I felt like a Nature Valley bar whenever I woke up. Just super crunchy and, you know, why isn't this going on? I just felt super crunchy and like 18 things popped whenever I like moved when I woke up. So, and my, my low back feels freaking tender. Shoulder feels a little goofy, wrist feels a little goofy. So I know that that's probably a sign of dehydration because I felt totally fine before bed last night. So, um, or maybe I just slept weird, but I, I kind of doubt that it would affect that many things. Anyway, I'm gonna drink some of this water before the gym. And uh, guys, don't be afraid to drink massive amounts of liquids before the gym. Because here's the thing, if you're getting in the carbs, right, you also need to be getting in the hydration. So don't just have the carbs, have the water, and also have the electrolytes, right? Um, to get the best pump possible, I usually just go with a half teaspoon, not tablespoon, a half teaspoon of salt. Um, doesn't really matter which one you use. People say, oh, you got to use pink Himalayan. I don't know how much bearing that has on it. They really just have sodium. You know what I'm saying? I don't look at what kind of salt it is. I just know it has a certain amount of sodium. So, like some salts, though, do vary in the amount of sodium, but what I'll do is I'll use a salt that has 14% of my daily value, value of sodium um, per serving, and I'll have a half teaspoon of that, and sometimes even a fourth, and that works pretty good, and it gets the veins flowing. Um, and then I'll also have honey, probably about 
two, two to three tablespoons, but it just depends on if I'm having other carbs as well. So that approach has uh, worked pretty well for me so far. We're going to go heavy on everything today, controlled on everything today. The goal for today's incline pressing is to get six reps. I want six reps on two plates with a nice touch on my chest, like a nice like controlled touch on my chest and up. Uh, I had a problem before with kind of hitting my chest too hard with the bar or like letting it sink in. And kind of how I would always gauge that is whether or not my chest was bruised when I'd get home. And, uh, you know, that has gone down significantly. My chest isn't really getting bruised because I'm controlling the weight so much now. Such in such a light manner, I'm touching at the bottom. And uh, it, I mean, here's the thing. When you sink the weight into your chest, your chest really isn't doing anything. When you just let the weight sink into your ribs. So what I do is, uh, well, what I do now is just, and I, I never really, like I touch my chest so lightly. It's, I, I'm surprised at how I do it. It's unbelievable. And it works. It feels way better on my chest. Way more stretch and contraction. Anyway, let's consume this creatine. We got the Believe mug today. We're believing we're going to hit this PR today. We're going to make it happen. Uh, not only are we going to go super heavy and incline, we're also going to do heavy flies. Um... I really want to get strong in flies. I just always feel like that's been kind of the missing link for me. Like, if I feel like if I could get strong at flies, my chest would be better overall. I've said this before. I'm going to keep saying it. So, you know, any kind of fly, really. But especially dumbbell fly, to be honest. Because I feel like they just never, they never really felt right to me. And I think I could make them feel right and get strong at them. And, and I don't know, that would, that would benefit me tremendously. Because here's the thing. I have a strong overhead press. I have strong triceps to be tricep dominant in my bench pressing, or at least before I was tricep dominant. But it's like, what's my chest doing? You know what I'm saying? So what I, what I think honestly could help in, for the future especially is just getting stronger pecs in general and making them the prime mover of my presses. Because I feel like if I could make my pecs the prime mover of my presses through getting them stronger in other ways also on top of pressing, then it would allow my pecs to have greater long-term development, if that makes sense. And uh, obviously, I can't change, you know, internal leverages of my muscles. And of course, my brain's going to just use the ones that are the strongest in certain positions, right? So I can't make my chest, I can't just exclusively use my chest during a press unless I'm training really like light and not hard. So, you know, finding a balance between, you know, super just, oh, my muscle connection, I'm just doing like eight pounds and like I'm ego lifting with three plates. You know, I think that this could help me find the balance with this new training approach and kind of uh, increase my pec strength and in turn increase pec size, which is obviously the goal on chest day. Why else would it be called chest day? I don't know. So, this creatine's like a little drum. Um, we're going to put a little cream in the coffee. A little enjoyment in the coffee. You know, I'm not a Starbucks guy, but the other day, before uh, leg day, or was it? No, I think it was actually before back day. I could be wrong. Nope. Nope, it was before leg day. Uh, I had a... Oat milk, brown sugar, cinnamon, espresso. And like, I didn't think it was going to be that good. But my goodness, dude, it was just like super good. And it was like authentic as a flavor. You know what I mean? And it's kind of hard to find really like nice, authentic flavors uh, in terms of coffee. Because a lot of the time it'll just taste like it's watered down or it, it'll taste bitter. And if you put too much creamer in, it'll taste too sweet. But dude, I mean, this, this thing tasted like bold and sharp and it didn't taste bitter. It tasted like nice and dark, but it also had the nice uh, creamer flavor. It wasn't too much. 
you know, the brown sugar and then the oat milk was a nice compliment. It had some nice flavor in the background. I mean, I'm not a coffee connoisseur or an espresso man, but I gotta say, guys, that, I mean, that was one of the more enjoyable beverages I've had. And that hit right, man. For leg day, I was able to squat five plates. So don't you tell me that espresso doesn't help on a leg day. I could squat five freaking plates for the first time. And I mean, this is on a cut. So, Ed, actually, granted, sorry. It was not on a barbell. Most of you probably thought I was talking about barbell. I was talking about hack squat. Still pretty impressive for me. But yeah, on a barbell, I could probably do maximum like... If I train for it, I could definitely get two plates, like, or sorry, sorry, <laughs> four plates. I could definitely get four plates pretty easily, I feel like, but I just never liked the way squats felt on my low back. So yeah, I could definitely get four plates pretty easily. I'd say give me like a couple months of just bulking um, and really dialing in my training, uh, squatting, figuring out the... Uh, the right pattern for a while I was I, I was I started doing Smith machine squats right with the bar on my back and uh, it worked pretty well and I felt like my form felt really good but I was still running into the low back issues and I figured out that um, it wasn't so much the form that's an issue for me or at least notably it's more so the volume that my low back can handle before it just kind of gives out and then like pops and something happens, uh, you know, or not even pops, but just like, just feels like a really intense, like stabbing sensation. So if I do one set of squats, as long as I don't do any more than one set, I'm good. I don't know why my body works that way, but I could do one set as heavy as I want, as hard as I want, no pain whatsoever in my low back. When I start doing two and three, then it starts happening. So I've learned to manage my volume and get through my leg days and still have them be ultra effective and relatively pain-free, right? I still will do two or three sets of hack squats sometimes just because I like the way they feel. And to be honest, the benefit to me of doing some extra hack squats outweighs the few days of low back pain. So I don't really care. But uh, yeah, I mean, I love, I've always loved, <laughs> that's, that's a lie. I haven't always loved narrow stance, but I do love narrow stance and to the point where my feet are completely together not cannonball style i'm talking you know v squat or whatever i'm talking i'm talking straight on feet are like this you know what i mean and uh i don't know why but that not only feels the strongest that feels like i can get the best stretch and contraction on my quads it just feels like i'm in my right groove for strength i mean it just feels great and then also on top of that uh if i do low bar with my feet together that sounds like a weird combo but it freaking works. So anyway, I, I don't know how this chest day conversation got so involved with leg day, but leg days have been great. So I am going to, I already had the creatine, about to slam this coffee, about to have some pre-workout carbs. I'll show you guys what I got. All right, boys, the cheat meal, or sorry, Dude, I'm, I'm so used to phrasing it this way anytime I eat anything remotely tasty. The pre-workout carbs that I'm having. Carrot cake, 340 calories per pack. Let's see how many carbs are in this. I, I frankly assumed that there would be a lot of carbs in here. Can you guys, oh my God. Can you guys guess how many, how many carbs are in here? And this, how many carbs are in this? A best guess in the comment section uh, I don't know. You'll get maybe a smile from me at some point in the future if I ever somehow see you in person. All right, time's up. 61 grams of carbs. And I know some of you cheated and searched up Miss Freshly's carrot cake. But I wouldn't cheat if I was you because I'll find you. And I will ban you from this channel quiz from now on. But anyway, I'm going to slam this coffee. I, had, I just actually slammed a liquid IV to get some electrolytes in and just get general hydration. And now I'm going to enjoy this carrot cake. Actually, I'm probably going to enjoy this coffee too. I'm not going to slam it. So I will see you guys at 
in the gym. We are here in the gym. I'm currently just waiting for a bench. Uh, somebody has it at a totally different spot, which is fine. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, I warmed up my shoulders a little bit off camera. I did some halos, which I like. They just feel better for mobility. Uh, and then I also did some just blood flow stuff, really, honestly. So yeah, but set it last night. I think I said it today, probably. I'm gonna do some heavy incline to start off. So, just super heavy incline. Lightly touching the chest, nothing, no sinking it into my chest like usual. Um, and then plus, after that, I wanna be able to get in some dumbbell flies. So, we'll see what happens with that. Anything's open, but I did come at peak hours. It's like right about to be five o'clock right now, so. Yeah, but also on the agenda today, we do have dumbbell side raises. I kind of figured out that, you know, dumbbell side raises are, or sorry, machine side raises are really painful on my shoulder joint for whatever reason when there's tension kind of in this bottom position, like when I have to side raise with the tension going at the bottom. So in that area, in that regard, dumbbell side raises are way more joint friendly because peak tension's pretty much towards the top of the rep. There's not really much tension at the bottom. So I'm gonna kind of just take advantage of that, get in some fun sets of side raises today, enjoy myself a little bit, get a good pump, uh, and then kind of make sure the form's dialed in enough to progressively overload. But I wanna try like chest supported side raises. I know that sounds weird, but I feel like chest supported is kind of maybe the missing link to that really stable form that I've been looking for that's like progressible long term. Because if anybody's watching my videos, you know, long enough, you guys know how, how I feel about side raises. I just kind of don't like how loadable they are. They're not loadable at all, really. Uh, just because the external moment arm is so long, right? And, uh, because of that, you know, you're not gonna really see much progression in it at all during your training. But, you know, as long as you're patient enough, it could work, so. Anyway, still waiting. But, you know, patience is a big factor in lifting. You know, if you're gonna progressively overload, um, I definitely think that you need to give it a lot of time. Like it does not happen overnight. Now, if you're totally new to the gym, yeah. And progressive overload pretty much happens overnight. But if you are, you know, intermediate, like I am, you know, not really new at all, but also not advanced, you know, you're gonna get progressive overload, but it's not gonna be super quick and you kinda just have to enjoy the process more than anything. You know, enjoy the means of getting there. So. I had about 123 grams of carbs before this lift. Uh, I had what I counted as 1.7 Miss Shirley's carrot cakes. So that was extremely good. And then I had, you know, the freaking Starbucks random coffee thing. But that was pretty good too. So. Whew. I'm getting antsy here. like the bench might be open. We're gonna be on this thing for a while. It's like humid in here, bro. Plates. Let's see how it moves. Dude, it's so hot. I'm not even gonna lie. It feels like it's like 
80, 85 degrees in here maybe. It's ridiculous. I'm like heating up, but this is better for the pump, so I'm cool with it. Let's get a nice song on. I think I slid back and it's set. I really want to do flies. I'm going to do flies and go heavy. I'm going to do incline flies. So, it's hard to explain, but there's like a sticking point that I feel right about here. And I could choose to turn it into more of a press at that point and bend my elbows in and just press it up the rest of the way. But what I was trying to do on that set and where I feel like my strength is lacking is right here, right? Right in this range where I can finish that. So I tried to keep my elbows pretty extended and just finish through that range of motion without bending my elbows and turning it into a press, keeping it relatively straight like a fly the whole time. So, well, because it is fly. But I feel like that's what I was talking about earlier and last night, developing strength in that area. I get, I get the feeling that that might help my chest. So, it's gonna help a lot. So anyway, I'm feeling a little bit crazy pumped, a little bit insanely pumped. I'm feeling one more set of this, hard and heavy, and a decline heavy. And then that should be it, should be good. And maybe do something for fun, something to just get a crazy pump. Well, obviously we're gonna move on to shoulders and triceps and everything, but you give it a minute, just do something also to get a crazy pump for the chest. Boys, I think I'm made of carrot cake. I have completely transcended reality. I'm no longer human anymore. I am just straight up carrot cake and carbohydrates. Play it safe. That was only a set of three, but we'll do better next time. Let's move over to side raises. Guess it's like four. Right. <laughs> 
Okay. That was awkward. Yeah, the thing is, with that, the bench started rocking back and forth a lot. And I just, you know, the first time doing it, I went pretty heavy. I forgot that, you know, when you don't have any body English, when you're not using any momentum, it can uh, get rough pretty quick. So, I think I'm going to reduce the weight to like 25 and just try a different approach. All right, I'm going to try just normal seated. His chest support felt decent, but I don't know, it just was slippy. Oh, look at that shoulder vein on the left. Can you guys see that? It's crazy. I'm feeling, this is definitely the most pumped I've ever felt. Cause I mean, I had more carbs before this workout than I would have when I was bulking. Plus, you know, when I was bulking, I would have, you know, slower digesting carbs before my workout just to get the calories in, right? Things like pasta, things like oatmeal, they're easy to eat. Um, whereas you could get like, it, it's hard to kind of just always have like cake or something laying around, you know? Um, but I will say on the bulk, I'm probably gonna be abusing honey abusing sweets that I could get my hands on uh, just before the workout just because these carbs have been a game changer so I mean I did a stupid amount of volume last week for pressing and shoulders and even though the fact that I'm in a caloric deficit you know has made me a little weaker in general I've been PRing like crazy um, since I started really just uptaking the carbs so all right, let's keep this pump going, huh? I'm gonna do one more set. but we're gonna make do with what we can. Uh, this is the only other place that I can pose right now. So usually I pose in the bike room if the like the Zumba dance room is full. So we might do a pump check down there and go see if it's empty after this. But in the meantime, this is like probably the best pump I've ever had. I'm gonna hit the side chest. Do it like Wesley.
You guys can't see my legs, but they look pretty cool too. All good, honey. I'm coming to you. Let's get out of here. All right, boys, I got a new form of cardio. We got the freaking trampoline. Apparently, it's called the rebounder or something. Mom ordered it. Came to the house. She said, oh, this thing is going to be cool. I'm going to use it. I'm going to like it. And I said, Mom, that thing, I could, I could make some good use of it. I could do this just, you know, around the house or whatever. I could freaking just do this all the time when I'm editing. When I'm, I can, I can maybe even eat on this. I mean, probably not. Probably not a good idea. You guys get what I'm saying. So, yeah, this will be part of the routine to some extent from now on. Uh, very, very effective for just, you know, steady state. You know, not too much elevated heart rate, and uh, you know, so I'm not burning out super quick, and I could just stay on this thing for a while. And, you know burn just a bunch of calories kind of like how when you're getting steps in during a walk you're just kind of passively burning calories you know it's a similar principle here you know I'm moving around a lot just getting my body flowing and moving and so definitely I plan on keeping this in the routine and somebody might say it's gimmicky but I really don't care just about any movement uh, burns calories so if I can do a you know, a fluid motion like this that's, you know, just jumping over and over again. I don't, I don't see what's bad about that. So, you know, make fun of it all you want, but you're not going to be the one who shredded because you're making fun of the trampoline until you stop making fun of the trampoline and then you'll be shredded when you hop on this thing. So, anyway, definitely curious to see kind of you know how much this helps in my routine because not only am I walking a ton but now whenever I'm not walking and I am just chilling at my house I could just do this so anyway hope you guys enjoyed the chest day I PR'd on incline press I got or not I keep I always say PR so my PR on incline press is eight reps for two plates on the Smith machine okay but my strength dipped down for a while while I was depleting everything, including carbs. You know, no carbs, just pretty much straight protein. Chicken only for like two weeks is what I did around that time period, around two weeks. So strength went down a ton from eight reps down to like two. And it was to the point where I had to literally drop the weight down on the Smith machine, incline press from two plates down to whatever. And now... I've built back up to six reps, you know, last week I got five, this week I got six, you know, it's just about adding reps each week, you know, so I will say I was talking a, on a walk a few days ago. I was like, you know, man, maybe I could add 
five pounds every two weeks on the bulk to my Smith machine incline press. And to be honest, I'm not sure how possible that is. Maybe that is possible, but that's a super quick rate of progression. So we'll see what happens there. But if I'm fully carved up and I'm managing my fatigue appropriately, I don't see why that wouldn't be possible. Uh, seeing as I have been in a kind of stupid surplus just from cheating randomly and stuff. You know, I was able to gain back my strength pretty easily. So I am curious to see like if I could just keep progressing, you know, more and more with my new kind of recovery and training approach. Because on my last bulk, I kind of just meat-headed my way through it. You know, tried to max out and stuff and do lifts that were like bro lifts all the time. You know, tons of volume. You know, a lot of random heavy lifts. But, you know, now I'm taking my training seriously. So I, I genuinely am really curious to see, you know, what kind of new games I can unlock. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for tomorrow, which is back, bicep, and forearm day in reverse order, so I'm doing forearm, bicep, and back, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a good one, take care.